I show you how to paint these three gorgeous watercolour flowers. Let's get started. I'm mixing up some Windsor Red here and some Cadmium Yellow and lots of water. So in watercolour we work light to dark. I'm just using my size 10 brush and I'm painting a rose pretty much out of my imagination. You can also use um, a reference photograph if you like, but I'm starting at the centre, quite small marks, leaving lots of white as well. And as I come out from the centre, the marks gradually get bigger. So as you can see here, the petals get bigger as, they, as the rose opens up. So keep it really simple. Don't overwork it. Leave, leave lots of white and it's really effective. And don't forget to keep loading that brush to put on fresh paint. What I'm doing now is I'm actually adding alizarin crimson to the Windsor Red. You can use another pink, quinacridone magenta, something a little bit darker. The paint's slightly creamier now, so I'm painting damp into wet so it doesn't run as much. I want the darks to be more near the centre. And I'm going to get some soft edges here as well. So I'm just sort of painting those darks, rinsing my brush now, diluting that red there. I'm just painting a little bit more of paler petals just at the top there. I felt it needed it just for the shape of the rose. Again, it's from my imagination. So because it's a Valentine's Day card, you don't have to worry too much about it looking perfect. Just try to tell yourself less is more. So I'm mixing up here some cadmium yellow with a little bit of Prussian blue. So I'm going to start off with a yellow green. So it's more yellow and less blue. Painting wet on dry, still with my size 10 round brush, some imaginary leaf shapes coming out of the top of the rose there. I'm adding some quinacridone gold now as well to the Prussian blue to create a sort of more of a natural looking green more earthy painting some more leaves here at the top wet on dry and as you get to the sort of top of the leaf just take your brush off and just sort of finish with the tip of the brush you get a nice point so this is quinacridone gold ultramarine and as you can see some of that Windsor red so I'm painting the stem which is more of a sort of warmer color here wet on dry still with my size 10 round brush um, down to the bottom of the paper there. Mix up a little bit of ultramarine with the Windsor Red and alizarin there, painting on the left hand side of the stem, damp into damp to create some shadow there, just to make, make it look a little bit more realistic. Rinse my brush, adding some more now Prussian Blue and the Quinacridone Gold to make a slightly darker green. And I'm going to paint some leaves here, painting the little stems first, loading my brush and then wet on dry, sort of pressing down the sort of belly of the brush and then coming up with the tip to paint the top of the leaf there. Painting another leaf as well, same sort of technique. Always keep loading that brush. It's so nice to actually paint without drawing, to be free. And it's also nice not to have to copy a reference photograph or even a rose in front of you. You can use your imagination and you don't have the pressure of it looking like the photograph or the rose in front of you. So I'm painting these sort of more mid-tone leaves here, wet on dry, adding a little bit of yellow here just to paint a slightly lighter colour underneath that leaf on the left. And then just mixing a touch more of the Prussian blue, painting wet into wet here, using the tip of my brush to paint those sort of spiky edge to the leaves there. Just taking my time. You don't have to have it all finished and polished. It can just be lovely and loose. And as this is for a card, it's quite nice to paint it in this way. So I've added some water there, a little bit more of the quinacridone gold and the Prussian blue. I'm just painting a touch of dark, damp into damp or wet on dry even to these top little leaves here to the left hand side as the light is coming from the right or the imaginary right, because this is also my imagination. I want to create an element of realism. So I'm using a plastic card here to scratch into the damp surface, either to pull out the paint to create a light effect or to scratch the surface for the paint to run back in on itself to create dark sort of veins there. As you can see, I've just done on this leaf. 
rinsing my brush now. I'm just going to get a little bit more green and just paint a touch more sort of sort of light to mid tone on this leaf here and then just blending with a clean damp brush just to soften that leaf in the center and I think it's a good time now to allow my painting to dry what I'm going to do now is just paint some sort of more darker tonal values using the Windsor Red and the alizarin crimson again starting off in the center of the rose where the tonal values will be darker because all the petals are closer together and i'm just painting a few more darks here and there on the larger petals and then softening and diluting with a clean damp brush the petal nearest to us the largest petal i'm just going to soften that there with my size eight round brush so you don't get any hard edges and I'm adding a touch more red just here and there just to build up the detail in the center using some alizarin crimson quite creamy just to paint a few more darks in there you can see I'm just painting sort of one stroke I'm not laboring the paint here just sort of little stroke here and there mixing up some of the Prussian blue and the yellow now mixing a darker green i'm adding a touch of the quinacridone gold as well just to make it even darker painting wet on dry some darks here on the leaves here using my size 8 round brush and glazing over that leaf there in the center and then blending the sort of right hand side with a clean damp brush so you've got some darks here and there and just again softening i've got lots of water on there and I'm adding a touch more darks on these top leaves, all wet on dry here and there using my size eight brush, rinsing my brush now, adding a touch more Prussian blue to the Windsor red and alizarin crimson and painting wet on dry down the left hand side here to create a touch more dark rinsing my brush and then softening that dark there so it looks sort of rounded and and you don't get a hard edge there so it's a good idea now to allow the painting to dry once more and what I'm doing is I'm just adding a few more darks and details to the center using the Windsor Red and Alizarin Crimson wet on dry using my size 8 brush you can see how this layering really does bring the rose to life and just adding a touch more dark down the left hand side of the stem and painting a few little marks either side there to make it look a little bit more natural adding a touch of the red and alizarin crimson and again just minimalist brush strokes there rinsing my brush and again look at all that water letting all that paint run down seeing what happens and i'm just softening the top part of this stem to make it look a little bit more natural and i'm just using my paper towel to lift off that paint to make it look a little bit more natural and I'm adding a touch more of the Windsor Red just at the bottom there so that I haven't lost the colour there after I lift it off with the paper towel. And I'm spattering here using the red, tapping the middle of my brush, allowing the paint to create some lovely textures and I'm signing and dating my painting. And this painting would make a great Valentine's card. And here is the finished painting. For my second painting, I'm painting some simple tulips using wet on dry and wet in wet techniques. This is suitable for beginners and improvers. I've actually painted this in my sketchbook to take the pressure off as well. So I'm starting off with some cadmium yellow here painting wet on dry. I'm mixing up a little bit of bright red here and the yellow and sort of pushing the red into the yellow sort of wet into wet there but just sort of really sort of having fun just sort of painting with watercolor not worrying too much here still using my size 8 brush really sort of loaded the brush with some red here as you can see you can see that paint traveling into the yellow there so you get some beautiful effects here so I've mixed up a little bit more of the bright red in here with a little puddle of water there so it's quite watery I'm sort of almost breaking all the rules here doing all the things I tell you not to do so I'm just dropping in a lot of really watery red paint there and letting it run down so it's quite sort of brighter at the top there and just working my way around to the right hand side here 
and coming downwards there so it's quite pale and I'm just getting a little bit more of the Indian yellow here and it's slightly creamy and just dropping it in wet into wet at the bottom of the tulip there still using my size 8 brush it's quite nice to have a simple composition like this just two tulips a couple of the top of the leaves there there's no pressure what I'm doing here is I'm just still using my size 8 brush and I'm just dropping in alizarin crimson which is a great sort of coolish dark red color and um, which is great for painting shadow colors um, on red flowers so I've mixed up a little bit of phthalo green light with a touch of the yellow there and I'm painting the stem wet on dry but I'm sort of touching the bottom of the tulip there so some of that yellow has come down as well so I'm painting the leaf now straight over the stem actually because I'm going to actually paint some shadow on the stem later so it's a lovely sort of bright green color this is a little bit of Daniel Smith's green appetite genuine because I've almost run out of my forest green there and I love this color so it's quite a nice me middle green tonally so and it creates some lovely textures but you, if you don't have this you can use something like sap green or make your own green using a little bit of ultramarine and yellow so I've mixed up some creamy green appetite genuine here again you can use sap green or hookers green and I'm painting it damp into damp with my size 8 brush so that's the paint's quite creamy and the surface isn't too wet but there's still a sheen on the surface I've actually just dropped some water in there as well so I'm hoping to get a little bit of a back run there later as you can see I've got a back run in the top left petal there and that's where the wet wash um, or water is dropped into a drying wash and that's when the shine of the paint is just about to disappear I'm using a little bit of red here with my size 4 brush paint a little bit of shading right in the middle of the tulip there with some bright red and a touch of alizarin. So I'm painting the right hand tulip now, painting some of the Indian yellow at the bottom. You can use cadmium yellow and in the description below I'll have a full list of the colours that I've used in this tutorial with colour alternatives as well. So I'm just painting a little bit of that phthalo green light there but you can use cerulean and yellow and I'm actually using cobalt violet light but you could use cerulean mixed with a touch of permanent rose for this gorgeous colour here. So I've applied it wet on dry and I've just used a clean damp brush to blend it out a little and now I'm using a little bit more of that cobalt violet light and I'm just dropping that in to the sort of petal of the tulip there wet on dry but also in the damp areas as well just trying to vary the sort of tonal value so where it's wet it goes lighter and where it's dry it's slightly darker because you're not diluting the paint as much I'm also looking for a few happy accidents as well um, because as you can see on that top left tulip now the red tulip um, you've got some lovely back runs especially on the sort of left hand petal there and it just brings a little bit of life and texture to the tulip which I love so I'm just continuing on here just using this cobalt violet light I'm using my size 8 brush still and sort of working wet on dry as I say and a little bit of wet in wet in places as well As you saw there, I added some of the purple there, damp into damp on the sort of shadow side of the tulip there. It really is effective and a little bit more of the cobalt violet light with the purple painting sort of wet into wet at the top. You can see how it's all running down to create that lovely sort of effect. This is why I paint watercolour. I love all these magical effects. I'm using a little bit of green here. It's really pretty much dried off at the bottom here. So I'm just painting some of that green appetite genuine wet on dry with my size 8 brush just softening with a damp brush there to paint a little bit more dark at the bottom of that stem there and I'm using a little bit more of that phthalo green light there painting wet on dry the leaf in the middle using my size 8 brush trying not to touch the other leaves leaving a little white sort of edge there um, if you're worried about that just allow each leaf to dry in between stages but if you want to 
you let them touch, they sort of just bleed in together and sometimes you get a nice back run as well. So I'm mixing up a little bit of burnt sienna here with some viridian, which makes quite a nice colour mix. And I'm painting that damp into wet there with my size 8 brush, adding a touch of ultramarine here just to create a little bit more shadow on this leaf here. This is slightly creamier, so it's damp into wet here just to create this shadow at the edge of the leaf. And I've decided to do the same just on the leaf here, just to the left. So um, I'm just dropping in a little bit more of this dark. And as you can see, it's kind of the negative spaces here and it brings out the positive shape of the stem so it's quite nice you're actually bringing this object forward or the stem forward by doing that and I love using this dark color here I'm using it at the bottom as well um, just to create some more dark here wet on dry rinsing my brush taking the excess water off and then just dropping in some water there just to soften that dark area there really trying to get a lovely fine point at the top there really working at that there I'm just painting a little bit of a light green wash here with my size 8 brush just behind the stem there so it's just a little bit more yellow in the green and I'm just painting this wet on dry with my size 8 brush sort of just alongside this leaf in the middle here so it's a really sort of dark leaf there so I think it's a good idea to allow my painting to dry I'm going to mix the darks and the details I'm using my size 4 brush I'm using some of the purple a little bit of that phthalo cyan in blue just to paint this dark you can use Payne's grey as well with a bit of purple really take your time with these areas it makes such a difference I'm just softening here with my size 4 brush adding a touch more of the violet on the left hand side here and again adding lots and lots of water in the middle so I'm just painting a little bit of orange at the bottom there using red and yellow and I'm going to add a little bit more of the lemon yellow pushing this creamy color up into that orange which is sort of shifting a little bit up into the violet color as well I'm using this limey sort of green color it's a phthalo green light with some yellow and just sort of painting this at the top of the stem and just softening down the stem as well using my side for brush. So I've mixed up a little bit of the purple with a phthalo cyan in blue. You can use Prussian blue and I'm just painting this dark now wet on dry just to show some of the detailing on the tulip here and I'm just painting a marks as well on the petal using this size 4 brush just to sort of bring it to life. There's a little bit of shading in the middle there as well so I painted that damp into damp. So I want to paint some dark reds here. So I'm using alizarin crimson with the bright red and I'm just painting the top part of this tulip here where there's lots of darks and details. So I'm painting it wet on dry and I'll just soften it here and there. It really is a case of less is more. You don't want to overdo it. Just let that watercolour shine as well, that underpainting. A little bit more bright red here just at the bottom. I'm using the paper towel to control the amount of paint on my brush. Sometimes you can have too much paint you put it on and you just can panic and this way you can control that amount of paint there again I just sort of rinsed off my brush I'm just using water to soften and dilute the paint as well so I'm just painting a little bit of dark down the left hand side of the stem here using a little bit of the green appetite genuine just softening again with a damp brush just to make sure I keep the light on the right hand side and it just makes it look a little bit more round that way when you soften that edge. I'm just painting a little bit of the bright red now onto the surface of the left petal here with my size 8 brush starting off wet on dry and then sort of diluting as well with water here and there just to sort of blend it back. I haven't gone for the really bright red tulip I sort of gone for this sort of paler sort of more orangey tulip as well. Um, so you don't always have to copy the photograph exactly. Use it as a source, a reference and a source of inspiration. And I'm just dropping in some creamier red here again at the top just to show some shadow and details here with my size 8 brush. More damp into wet so the surface is very wet still but my paint is slightly thin 
thicker and this is a Lizarin crimson now so I'm really going for the darks on the left hand side the light coming from the right and just painting some of those marks on the petal damp into damp and just softening the bottom part here with a clean damp brush working on the right hand petal now wet on dry to begin with with a little bit of that bright red with my size 8 brush it's quite dilute I'm just really sort of looking at this sort of slight bit of shadow on the right petal here and just sort of painting wet on dry and then softening with a damp brush there just working my way down and actually really diluting towards the bottom to make sure it's paler just getting a little bit more this is called French vermilion here and just dropping this in wet into wet looking for a few more of those happy accidents there and just adding a little bit more red in again wet into wet just to finish off and I'm just signing and dating the painting here it's a really nice way of just stopping yourself from overworking your painting as well for my last painting I'm painting this really pretty pink rose and I'm going to show you how to build up light to dark creating those lovely shadows. I'm using just three colours ultramarine, quinacridone magenta and cadmium yellow pale. i am just sketched the outline of the rose very simple outline with an HB pencil. The sketchbook's actually with cartridge paper it doesn't like too many layers and I'm just painting wet on wet this dilute quinacridone magenta here with my size 8 brush with watercolor you work light to dark so I've just put that very pale pink wash on I'm going to let that dry I'm mixing up some green now quite a pale green using the yellow and the blue painting wet on dry I'm keeping everything very very simple painting on the lightest tonal values first and it makes it so much simpler as well just using three colors so I'm going to mix up using a little bit of the pink and yellow to kind of make a sort of an orangey colour and I'm painting this on the stem here so it's got that sort of lovely colour making just a little bit more and just painting this wet on dry with my size 8 brush so as you can see there you can actually mix quite a variety of colours just using three colours so I'm just finishing off the leaves here now and I'm going to allow my painting to dry once your painting is dry what I'm doing now is I am mixing up sort of the medium tones um, still using the quinacridone magenta so I'm actually wetting the surface first very carefully I don't want to disturb the paint underneath and I'm painting this mid-tone wet in wet trying to leave the sort of tops of the petals light so you're sort of you've got your lightest tonal value that very pale pink we painted on in the first stage and now I'm sort of painting that next tonal value I'm just painting this little bit of shadow area darker pink there and leaving the outside edge of the petal lighter and just painting this corner here um, a little bit darker as well again wetting the petal here and I'm going to paint again wet in wet with that quinacridone magenta there using my size 8 brush and keeping the outside edges lighter so just apply it sort of halfway down the petal don't go too near the top then you'll lose otherwise you'll lose your light so I'm going to allow my painting to dry again to set it in a way and build up some sort of mid to darker tones and um, I'm adding a little bit more of the paint here wet on dry it's a force of habit <laughs> um, but again diluting and blending with a clean damp brush and allowing the paper towel to control the moisture on my brush there so just sort of building up some of those darker sort of shadow colors and then blending out to reserve my lights and I'm just dropping in a little bit more of a creamier color there wet into wet I'm doing the same thing here at the top wet into it using the tip of my brush it's quite dark at the top of the petal there and I'm pushing in clean water pushing that sort of darker paint to the top sometimes you get a nice dark outline edge as well
I love what happens here. I've wet the petal. I've got a slightly creamier quinacridone magenta. And as I applied it, you can see how it's running there. It's all got sort of spidery marks like veins all happening quite naturally. I was so delighted, so I left it alone. But it gives that lovely natural look. So that was quite a creamier wash onto a damp surface. So I'm just working my way around the edge here, just making that slightly darker as well. Um, I've mixed up a little bit of the yellow and the ultramarine. Um, the ultramarine is quite nice for making darker pink colours, but not so great at making bright greens. Um, so I'm trying to get a muddy colour here as well. So I've added a little bit of pink to the green um, to get that sort of more muddy colour in that sort of foreground petal there. So I'm doing my best here and I want to keep the leaves really simple as well. I don't want to overcomplicate them. It's all about the rose. just painting a few little darks here and there where the petals have curled around so I've got sort of my medium to dark tonal values on now so it's a good time to allow my painting to dry to finish off with darks and details so I'm wetting the sort of really the central sort of petal here the center area with some clean water and adding some darker magenta paint here and letting it bleed so it's a little bit darker both sides of that center petal I'm trying to keep the center part much lighter this area here is quite dark so I've actually added some ultramarine to the magenta and I'm painting wet on dry rinsing my brush taking the excess off and then just blending that colour. But I'm just painting some little darks on the outside edge of the petal there really just to bring it away from the white background. I'm wetting the paper here and then painting on some quite dark colour here. If you look at that left hand side petal there it's really quite rich and dark. Again dropping in creamy magenta and I've actually added a tiny touch of yellow to that just to slightly warm it up and I'm using that same colour here the magenta with a tiny touch of yellow on this um, part here as well using a dark here um, on this petal that's curled over there's some shadow there and even adding some more darks on this side here just put, painting little darks here just to bring out the top of the petal and then blending with my size 4 brush there so I'm going to allow my painting to dry again and I'm just going to paint in some real darks and details here just to describe the sort of details and veins on the petals wet on dry. So I'm working on the leaves here. I'm mixing up a little bit of blue with a touch of pink to paint this sort of cast shadow on the leaf here at the top. I do blend this back later because it looked a bit odd because sometimes when you copy from a photograph or use it as a reference yeah, and now so I am blending that shadow there just to push it back a little bit and here is the finished painting I really hope you enjoyed this rose step-by-step -step tutorial and are inspired by the other two flower painting tutorials if you have any questions please put them in the comments section if you'd like to support the content that I create here on YouTube why not think about joining my Patreon membership? You will get access to my weekly exclusive tutorials, extended tutorials and downloadable outline sketches and you can cancel anytime. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Happy painting. Bye for now.